just outside of DC. I'm gonna get, I got 1.5 miles to get on to 495. Get over here and deliver this load. Hopefully traffic's not too bad on 495, but we'll see how that goes. It got a little dicey up there north of the, the Petro. Oh, wherever it was. Um, the Rafine, Virginia. That's where I stopped last night, so. Got one mile. Oh, we're doing a half mile now. Okay, I didn't realize we were going in a half a mile. Let's just do this then. the snow I mean it was raining kind of looked like it does now um, most of the night last night and then uh, like you know 30 minutes 45 minutes into the trip this morning it started to turn to flurries and then it got started sticking to the windshield and all that good stuff of course you're gonna do that to me thank you so much GPS this is why I don't like my Rand McNally you have another option and it has the external charger in it so not only do i have the factory charger you know the 12 volt i have the other charger in it to keep it charged and it's not charging that's so frustrating it's done this to me it did this to me in the chattanooga round trip load that i did downtown chattanooga the damn thing just shut off like really, I literally have no idea where I'm going. I'm like why aren't you charging? What is your problem? Real life struggles here. I keep trying to turn it on, but apparently it doesn't want to do that. not even recognizing that it's getting a charge. What the actual hell? Oh, there we go. Now something's charging. get this squared away and I will catch up with you guys here in a view. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Well, it won't turn on. I don't know what the deal is. It keeps giving me the battery sign like it's not charging or it is charging, but it doesn't have enough juice to turn on. I'll wind up having to get a new GPS. This is frustrating, but whatever. 0.4 miles, 69 feet. Let's get over that way. Now what are you doing? Oh, now you're charging? You've, you've got enough juice to, to do something? I'm only 2.3 miles out, so it's not too bad. I hate having to do this, uh, you know, but luckily I did like preview my route so I don't have anything major like, you know, that I have to deal with. So just uh, obviously pay attention to signs and I gotta figure out what uh, OT Rookie uses. Cause I know he uses a GPS on his phone. I don't know what app that is or whatever it is an app. I don't know. 
I know he's got a truck GPS and then he also uses another GPS on his phone. I don't know if it's Google Earth or what. I'm gonna have to ask him. trying to find that and I'm like this road doesn't exist so finally I looked up the company and my bill of lading actually has the right name on it I've gone gotten in issues like that before where you pick up a, a load or you're supposed to go to a, a destination wherever ship a receiver and I'm like they don't even stand up anymore he just got himself a yard chair sitting out there jeez um, And the, the name of the street is actually a different name or like a county road goes by Smith Road or something like that. So you can't find it under the county road. You got to look it up under a, a different name. You guys run into that a lot? I run into that more often than I'd like. But, but generally we'll Google Earth something, try to find the location. And then my destination is going to be on the left up here. This thing's saying the right, but I'm pretty sure it's on the left. Well, at least this guy's standing. I can't see the red light. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's it. Do not enter, do not enter. Am I supposed to enter that way? Yeah, okay. All right, I'm gonna check into the garden. Uh, see you here in a few. So this is a federal compound, apparently. My carry permit is no longer valid, here at least. Um, they sweep the truck, they do everything they need to do for the truck. Um, like they, they have a canine that comes around and walks around the whole truck and all that stuff. So I was like, well, I'm gonna let him know uh, just so he doesn't like indicate on 
gunpowder and all that stuff. So we're gonna see what happens here. Uh, and yeah, go from there. I told him I could surrender it. I have a lockbox for it. Showed him my carry permit and all that good stuff. Um, he's calling to see what to do because I mean he's nice about it. He wasn't like freaking out. He's like, okay, I don't, I don't know. Uh, let me call to figure out what we need to do. Uh, so we'll go from there. I don't know what they're gonna do, but it's all good. I figured I'd rather let them know before, uh, you know, like I said, before the dog says, hey, there's something in here. But yeah. So right now we're just sitting here waiting to find out what is going on, like what they're gonna do. So they gave me the badge, gave me the paperwork, kind of gave me the routine of what's going on. And I was like, hey, by the way, uh, I have a permit for a concealed handgun. So I didn't realize this was a federal property because uh, it doesn't say anything about federal property uh, on the bill or anything like that. So it just says general supply administration, something like that. So nothing to me indicated federal property, but um, hopefully I can just surrender my my firearm until I you know get through here and then went on my way back out, pick it back up. But we'll uh, go from there. So hopefully you don't have too many issues. So yeah, I will uh, let you know what's gonna go on from there. Got a few. Guys, so I finally got unloaded. Um, I'm still here on their property. But, um, so yeah, like I said before, it's a federal installation. I didn't know that, uh, nobody let me know, so I'm definitely gonna make sure I relay the info back to the, uh, the agent so he knows what's that this is so we can prevent issues like this again in the future with somebody else um so the you pull into the property and the gate and obviously the guy meets you but it's not a security guard like i thought it was actually a federal police uh super nice guy uh he was like hey man how's it going you got your bill of lading you know your id all that kind of stuff really nice guy no issues there um, and he's like hey yeah you're gonna go up here to this building blah 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 told me where to go um, and then and he's like but before you do all that I need you to pull up here to the striped areas uh, over here and they're going to uh, have the dog walk around your truck and inspect you and, and I'm like what do you mean the dog? He's like the, the canine dog. I'm like, oh, okay, um, all right. So at that point, that's when I was like, oh, you know, he might hit on gunpowder, you know? So I'm, my first thought was like, shit, all right, uh, I need to let him know that I have a firearm. So I told him that, uh, showed him my carry permit, and, you know, like I said, he's just trying to figure out what to do. Um, and yeah, it was pretty interesting. The guy's like, just lock it up in the box. Uh, I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. So that's what he did. Uh, he told me just lock it up. I did that. Um, you know, I unloaded it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, everything was cool. You know, got out, opened everything up for the dog to search, and went from there. So no big deal as far as that. Just kind of interesting. It's almost like a military base. Uh, you go to where they search everything and, and all that but i've never had a dog walk around my truck i've had like the military they use like a, a mirror under the truck and stuff like that to kind of check on on things um but yeah it was pretty wild um and then you know i, I followed his instructions you know pulled over to the stripe dog did their thing or the dog did his thing um the, both the both the officers were super nice very friendly, uh, very professional, and that the, the canine officer was like, hey, I'm not gonna shut my door. Um, yeah, follow the blue line and it'll take you to shipping and receiving. I'm like, perfect. So I get over there and the guy inside shipping and receiving is like, no, you need to go past that building, go over there, which is the instructions from the first officer. But I was confused because obviously I had two officers telling me where to go. Uh, and I don't want to screw anything up and have them like tase me or anything. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, 
No, I just, I, it's a small compound. There's personal vehicles everywhere and I didn't want to have an issue. Um, so I was just trying to pay attention to what they said. Oh man. So I had to find somewhere to turn around and I noticed there's this black Dodge pickup truck behind me. He's following me. It was the first officer. He's like, just keeping an eye on me. So everywhere I went, he was following me, keeping me in his sight, like not the truck. So if I, when I got out of my truck to go around to the shipping office, I had to walk around the front of my truck and go up the passenger side to the door. Well, uh, he parked so he could see me. Um, and then I, I walked back from the shipping office. He's like, hey man, is everything all right? And we wound up chit-chatting for a little while. And super nice guy. Um, you know, we need more cops like him. And if you're watching this, great job, man. I appreciate your service. Uh, you guys did a fantastic job. But yeah, overall, um, had a canine walk around the truck. I uh, had to lock up my firearm. I thought I was gonna surrender it. I told him I would uh, until I leave. But he's like, no need, just lock it up keep it locked up and we're good so that's what I did and I mean it was wasn't really that big of a deal I guess it was a little more a little more interesting than what I would have liked so the whole experience overall was was interesting it was kind of nerve-wracking because it's like all right I got federal cop following me um, but like I said he was super friendly uh, he did his job very well and I mean, both of them did. They did a fantastic job. The canine caught me off guard because it was like a golden retriever kind of, or golden lab or something like that. It wasn't like the, the typical German shepherd canine. Um, but both of them were nice. Both of them were friendly. Like I said, I, I can't give them enough praise. They've done an excellent job. Uh, everybody there was super friendly. And he said that he has issue like issues with guys coming in all the time and they're just like, oh crap, he's got a badge. And it, he's like, a wall goes up immediately. And then like the drivers are just assholes. And he's like, I can meet your attitude with attitude. That's fine. And he's like, I just come out all the time. Like, hey, what's going on, man? How's it going? And I can attest to that. He did a fantastic job greeting me. He caught me off guard because he's in like full bulletproof vest, tactical, everything, everything except for a helmet. Uh, and I, he wasn't carrying an AR, but I mean, full, full ready tactical gear to go to war and it just I was like whoa kind of like I didn't expect that out of a security guard but uh come to find out yeah it's a federal installation so I'm gonna head on over here get my next load and I will see you guys on the next one as always please be safe love one another give you families uh, hugs and kisses because you never know when it's gonna be the last and uh Y'all stay safe out there. I will see y'all in the next one. Y'all be good.